Oh hey, so today we'll be learning something really interesting. I promise you it'll be very fun, be really exciting. It's a bit of a longer tutorial, but we'll learn about web application security. And before we start hacking kids, remember to ask your mom for permission first. So first, you have a target of interest. And in this case, it could be a target like a website. And it could be, say, example.com that you're going after. Or it could be a specific IP address. It could be certain domains and so on. So all this are the potential targets that you can go after. And the first thing you want to do is, of course, you want to use a tool like, say, Nmap or certain discovery tools that can help you look into the specific target and say, OK, what are all the different services that are installed within it? Say, for example, do they have a HTTP server? Do they have a website running? Do they have databases? Do they have some kind of administrative portal that you can go after? Then you look for unpatched systems systems where there could be certain specific vulnerabilities that you can go after. And sometimes they are available directly as exploits, or you can craft your own payloads against those target services. And then you load this payload right into the service, giving you control of the entire computer. And as a pro hacker, all you need is one entry point to gain access to the entire computer. And right in front of us, I have Kali Linux running, and this is perhaps your favorite operating system for hacking, or it could also be Windows XP. It doesn't matter which operating system you're using, you could even hack from your phone. So the first thing we do, we want to discover devices within, say, the network or a specific target IP address. And this tool is usually used the moment you join those free Wi-Fi's at the cafe, at the shopping mall, at all these different places. And once you're in there, you want to uncover all these devices within the same network and you want to target them later on. So this is the reason why you'd be using NetDiscover for that. I can see right here, I have a specific target, in this case, 192.168.0.100. So this is the IP address that we're going after. The next thing you do is you want to enumerate all those services within this IP address and see which one of them are potentially open, vulnerable, and can go ahead and target them. So you use a tool like Nmap, which is network mapping tool, SV192.168.100, hit enter on this, and now we are scanning this IP address, looking out for all those services they're running, and then after which we could possibly target them from there. So let's give it a couple more seconds for it to scan through all those ports and be able to identify those services for us. And then later on, we can start looking into these services. Awesome. The scan is completed now. And this is a very important list because this list would tell us some important things that we can go after first. It has secure shell open, meaning that there is some kind of ability for us to remotely connect over to the computer and control it. There's also Telnet, that is a mail server, and you can see a huge list here, right? HTTP as well, which is commonly used for web services, and you have other like POP3, IMAP, Sambar, possibly different types of file sharing services, another one which is NetKit, RSH, probably some kind of remote control services, and so on. So several HTTP2 that we can easily go into and take a look at things there. Uh, NFS as well. So lots of different services they're running within this single IP address within this single server. Next up, we can open up your favorite browser. So in this case, I have Firefox. You could also be using Internet Explorer if that's your favorite browser. You go and enter directly into the IP address. So in this case, we have 192.168.0.100. You clicked onto it and it says, hey, this is a vulnerable server and so on. So this is, again, a good service, a good operating system for us to test out on. So what we really want to do next is to start crawling against the web server and see whether there are any sensitive pages, any login pages, any specific pages of functions that they have available for us to go after. So I can use a tool like Nikto, followed by 192.168.0.100, hit enter on this. And now we're scanning. We're scanning against this specific IP address and we're looking out for different pages, directories that we can access into. And you can see over here, we have DOC, we have IMGS, we have phpMyAdmin. This is a very important page we probably need to log in into in order to see all those information within the site. And we have icons, PHP LDAP admin. Now with all these identifications, you can directly browse over into say PHP, my admin or LDAP admin, and you're able to see there's a login page, you can click onto it, and you're navigating across all these different services and see whether you're able to log in and gather the data information for it. So you have the login DN, you have password, you click anonymous, authenticate, are you able to get it? Are you able to search for things? And if I would switch over to PHP, my admin, hit enter on that, 
likewise, right? It prompts you straight away for username and password. So we don't have any of those information with us. So we need to start enumerating more and we can possibly try to go to other services. So for example, in this case, we saw one port 10,000. When I clicked onto this, I see here we have a web min server. And a lot of these different operating systems or services or virtual service, whichever service they are, they need some kind of tool to help them administer the server. And the server could have databases, it could have your web servers and all these different services they're running and need to administer them from a simple portal. So there's a couple of things we can do. We can search, search exploit and see where you can find any specific payloads or exploits available directly with this service. So in this case, we can see that we have several of them and we likely need to pinpoint a specific one that we can go after. At the same time, we can also use like sudo MSF console to help us see whether there are directly easily available modules that we can use for Metasploit they can make things a lot easier for us as part of attacking the web server. So in this case, if you go ahead and load into Metasploit and you search webmin, you can find a few modules or entry points and we can easily use them. So in this case, the one that we can use, you'll be using several of them and I've used many of them. I've tested them out manually as well to see whether it's vulnerable. And the good news is auxiliary admin webmin file disclosure is the one that works. So if you go ahead and enter use one, show options and you go ahead and enter say set our host to 192.168.0.100 so we're targeting this specific ip address and once you're ready just go ahead and hit enter on that and you can see the r path so this is the file that we're going to enumerate is at c pass the blue d and if i go ahead and enter run you can see we got some results over here and this result we can see that we got all those users, all those different identities from the operating system directly because of a vulnerability related to the webmin service. If you want to find out more about why this module works, you can enter show info. And from show info, you can see right here, this is the webmin file disclosure. And this is the disclosed date. All right, we have all this different information here and you have the references. So we can go ahead and search up on this and see why this is occurring. And we can manually exploit it too, because we, don't want to be a script kitty. And here we are at Webmin Exploit Database. And this is the one that we'll be using. And if I scroll down further, you can see the payload and why it works. So if you see right here, we have something interesting. So I'm going to break this down for you. You have the HTTP and the target and the port. So in this case, a port 10,000. And you go into this specific path, which is slash unauthenticated. And there is a dot tam. So dot tam over here, you can see it references to the earlier one. And this variable here is a slash dot dot, all right, followed by percentage zero one times 40, and then followed by the file name. So this is a way for you to manually exploit the vulnerable service. So right now, let's go ahead and launch Burp Suite as our interceptor in enter on that. And we're now launching Burp Suite. So this is going to be our interceptor. I'll be using this as part of launching the attack. So what we can do now is to intercept the requests, or right, I'm going to close on to the update. And now we have Burp Suite running. Let's go ahead and maximize on this. And you can see the proxy intercept is on. And what we want to do now is go ahead and hit enter on this. And we're taking and picking it up from the interceptor. So if you can see the interception right here, I can send this over into repeater. And once in repeater tab, what I can do is go ahead and click send and you get a response directly from the web server. And the payload that we saw earlier, we're gonna copy and paste it right here and see what we get as a result. And you can see right here, I got the payload and a payload looks like this. All right, so there are 40 of slash dot dot percentage zero one. So that was used as the payload. So what I can do now is go ahead and click send and we get the result. You can see right here, this is the result. And we even got one, which is one OS admin that has a protected password value that we could possibly try to crack later on using some other cracking tools, password cracking tools. And we can see all those different information on users here and we can reuse them. We can possibly reuse them into those remote services that we can authenticate into. And at the same time, because now we have this file inclusion vulnerability that we discovered, we can try to go into our sensitive part of the operating system that could be storing some of these credentials like your usernames and passwords and try to reuse them and authenticate them into those other services. So if you recall earlier, we did the network mapping scanner against 192.168.0.100. And you can see several of the services here. And some of these services, for example, like LDAP, it means that 
this LDAP is running, and there could be a specific folder inside the operating system that stores the credentials of LDAP, and we'll be targeting that. Now I go back over into Interceptor, and I'll change from shadow to LDAP.secret, and see what we get as a result. Click send, boom. You can see right here, we have a secret value, can you hack me? So this is likely the password that we can use to authenticate to possibly other services in hopes that the password is being reused for many of these services. So what I can do now is go ahead and save this over into a file. Can you hack me? And I'll save this over into say password.txt. And of course I can do a cat password.txt. And of course we can see that this is the value that has been saved inside this file. And the next thing we want to do is go back over into burp suite and we have the at C, all right, followed by pass WD. We want to save this as well. So let's go ahead and click send. And we'll save all of these values over into a file as well so that we can reuse them as part of attacking the server. Let's go ahead and copy this. And I can do a sudo mousepad. And perhaps uh, let's go ahead and save this over into list of usernames.txt. Hit enter on this. I've already saved it. All right. So this is the list of usernames that we have from the earlier result. Now we saw port 22 open and we want to test it out and see whether we can get an entry into the server. So in this case, we can use a tool like Medusa to help us do the attack. So dash u list of usernames and followed by dash p password.txt. So we only have one password entry. That was the only one we discovered. And then followed by dash m ssh and then followed by dash h 182.168.0.100. Hit enter on this. And now we are doing a brute force attack against the secure shell service. And right here, you can see we're going through the list of usernames like root, daemon, bin, sys, sync. Okay, good news. It's done. We have managed to get the password. So in this case, you can see the following user von OS admin password. Can you hack me? So we can go ahead and do a SSH secure shell access over into the service. So what I can do now is go to enter SSH von OS admin at 192.168.0.100. And the password is can you hack me? Hit enter on that. Boom, we're in. We now have remote control of the entire website. This is game over. Not only that, we want to really understand whether we have the privileges of a super user, root, the ultimate user. And what we can do now is go ahead and enter, say, sudo-l, hit enter on this, and enter the same password that we have. It says following, user von no OS may run the following commands on this host all. So if I do the following of sudo bash, hit enter on that, Boom, who am I? I am rude. That's it. It's game over. We have full remote control of the entire computer. So once again, I hope you've learned something useful, something valuable, something that can be helpful for you. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications to the channel so they can be kept abreast of everything that's happening in cybersecurity and learn as much as possible you can from this channel. Stay tuned for more tutorials coming your way.